We start laughing every single time that we come on. Okay. I'm going to see what others can see. Can you see <coughs> what we can see? Just waiting for it to show. Normally your, your telephone goes ding. Oh, we're not going to say we're going to ding, are we? There you go. <laughs> oh my god, that's good. Oh, is that because of that? That's because of this. Right. Mm -hmm. There it is. Sorry about that. If you're watching the replay, that's rather boring, isn't it? <laughs> Making sure we can hear. There we go, we can hear. Okay. I'm going to do some sewing must-haves. Really? Yes. <laughs> and you can tell me if you have them or not. Right. Okay. Okay. So the first one that I always use is my quarter of an inch foot with guide. I'm not sure if I've got that. I'm not sure. I'll have to check. Do you find it useful? I do, actually, yes. It's very, very useful. Yeah. And the reason why I like to use I use this more than the regular foot. Like my foot is the J foot on the Baby Lock Soprano. I'm not paid or sponsored to say any of this stuff, by the way. It's just stuff that I like to use. So um, it's basically like a regular foot, but it's got a guide on the side of it that helps with the quarter of an it inch. It does help, actually. I really like it. Like I've only used it since I've been here, but I need to check my... Um... Little box. Um, I don't know whether this, I don't think mine actually came with it. I think I bought it as a separate foot, so no. you might have to buy a separate foot. But yeah, it helps with get the quarter of an inch foot, um, quarter of an inch whenever you're doing your quilts. And I, I basically do a lot of quilts anyway. Obviously, you can't really do it when you're doing your dressmaking because it's not a quarter of an inch, is it? It's, it's five eighths of an inch or something, isn't it? Or it's mm. seven eighths. It's in a quarter of an It's definitely not a quarter, is it? No, I don't think it's another. So. I'm wondering if you can get another foot with the guide that has it for dressmaking. Yeah, it would. It would have. It would be, wouldn't it? Like mm -hmm. I'm sure they'd have one. Um. Obviously, you can use like the washi tape thing to, you know, mark where your quarter of an inch is. But I just find this is really useful because you just put the fabric up to the guide, yeah. and there's just no messing around with it. You just do away with it. Yeah. You're I not having to set anything up or anything like that, and. Also, when you use the um, the magnets, they kind of move on you. You can put a magnet on the on the base of your thing to line up your quarter oh, of an inch. I didn't know that. You 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 know your actual sewing machine does show you where the quarter of an inch is as well yeah. on the actual yeah. plane. Um, I know some people will put like painters tape or washi mm -hmm. tape, and they can get that quarter of an inch. Oh, that's a good idea. But obviously with quilts, it's some you do really be you, you kind of do have to be precise with it because the moment you're out off and off and then off and then off, when you're doing all them seams, it keeps slipping off. Yeah. So by the time you come to the end of your quilt and you're trying to line that next row up, sometimes it can be a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, you get a little bit more advanced where you can just like kind of fudge it back and forth. <laughs> I'm sure we've all done things like that. No, no, we no, 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 I think so. Another thing in my sewing room, and I got you started on using these things. I really like them. I do. Is the wonder clips? Mm -hmm. Oh, and there's a there's a bowl here that there's a YouTube I, video on this bowl. It's all made out of Mod Podge, and then I put all of my wonder clips in. So this is another sewing supply. I I reckon is a must have. I do like these. I love loads and loads of different colours you can actually get so wonder clip is a brand name and wonder clip basically does the white and red ones you can get big ones what can't you yeah we saw them in the yeah, culture you can get some really big ones in these as well you can get some longer ones yeah. you can get medium ones they're not all this size and also you can get these obviously off amazon i'm not paying or sponsored i'm just gonna keep saying that so i don't get hold off or whatever but yeah i like this so these are just these supplies that i use in my sewing room that i use all the time i use all the time so and i don't like pinning 
some of the cats have laid on the floor. <laughs> I don't like pinning, so I'll use my wonder clips. I'll use wonder, wonder clips with quite a lot of things like um, quilting, bag making, everything really. Mm -hmm. Doing my hemming, like yeah. when we did yeah. the hem, mm -hmm. I just used the clips instead of the pins. Mm -hmm. And also I don't like sewing over pins anyway because I don't like the fact of that pin flying out kind of thing. I think they're easier to take out than pins as well. That's my preference is it? anyway. Well with pins you have to make sure that you put them in the right way round. Yes. And I always yeah, put them in the true, wrong yeah. way round. Yeah. And like yeah. if you put them in the right way round as you're feeding it through, you can just take them out. What's well, everybody else's preference on like using the, Wonder the clips. clips or the um, or pins. I do like these. <coughs> I've also seen people using paper clips as well, eh? Oh really? Paper clips, bobbin pins for the hair. Oh right. Using them to hold fabric together. Yeah. Really? Oh and then bulldog clips that you clip paper together. Yes, with. I've seen that one, yeah. Yeah. There is a right way or a wrong way of actually using these as well. The right way is um, uh, on the clear side, it's flatter. So when you're gripping it and your fabric is there, you kind of want to grip it like that way. And then that this bent bit is going underneath and the flatter bit is going on the top. It holds things much better when you do that. That's what I actually learned from another YouTuber. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okie dokie. So the next thing on my must have sewing supplies, and I'm not paid or sponsored to say any of this, but a lot of different marking tools. Now I'm a huge fan of the friction pen. Um, that's the friction pen. This irons out a fabric. Um, and don't believe what they say that it actually comes back because in, in my experience, I live in a negative 30 environment. So I was able to experiment this and I can't remember on what video I did it on. I did do a video on this and I proved that this doesn't come back. Um, you might see a shadow of a line um, when you mark with a friction pen, but when it comes with the ink coming back, I think that's actually an old wife's tale. I don't actually believe it happens. Um, also, I don't really press too hard with these things as well. I don't know if that makes a difference. Like if you if you repeatedly go and over and over and over and over and over and over, which you don't you really don't have to. to. Um because <clears throat> like the pen is there as a temporary line. So you're like you're gonna mark it, you're gonna do your line, and you're gonna press it out. So whether or not people have marked it and not press it out straight out. away. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it comes back. I've, <clears throat> no, I've used these since I've been here and I have purchased them while I'm here. They also <laughs> do these in the felt tip version as well, by the way. So they, they are pretty good as well because yeah. then you're not pressing too hard. I, know, I found these, especially when you can iron them out, you know, you get a nice straight line. Do whatever you need to do, curly, really. curly. <clears throat> and they come in a lot of different colours. And I don't think they come in a white. And I wish they did come in a white. But So when you're using like a black like fabric dark. or a blue fabric, yeah, then dark, it would show dark, up. Yeah. Because they're the, they're the colours of fabrics you're going to struggle with, with them. And then this is why something like this will come in handy. There's loads of different marking tools out there. Like this one is like a chalk marker. And um, it's like a style of a pen as well. And it comes in lots of different colours, so you can select which colour you want. Uh, you, you twist it, so the white here, and it comes up. So I use friction markers, chalk markers. Um, I use that friction one all the time. The chalk I've used when I've wanted to do free motion quilting, but I mean, I can do the marking with free motion quilting on my pen as well. I suppose that was your preferences at the time, isn't That's it? That's what I forgot to tell you the other day, you could have used a friction pen for your free motion quilting. Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm, you know, I never even thought Sorry, I never even time. thought about that at the time. Thank you. I was doing <laughs> something and I wasn't thinking. 
kind of like what I had my head in that day. I was making a placemat, I think. Yeah, you were. I was in a placemat and you were doing your washing crossing. Yeah. We won't talk about it, we'll just stop that. Um, another thing is obviously rotary cutters um, in your must have sewing supplies, um, not paid or sponsored, but I do favour the Fisker brand over the, is it Olaf, the yellow one? I like Fiskers for some weird reason, I don't know why. Why, what's the difference? Um, I think it's the, this has a better grip to it, I think almost I don't know it has a better grip has loads of like rubber here and I think it's the way that that comes out yeah. like the guide I think it's also the way that the blade is screwed on I think a bit better and then these come in different sizes as well so you, so you can get a bigger version of this this one I think it's a 60 millimeter and I think this is a 45 the 45 is more common and then you've got this one, and I think you can get a smaller one than this, can't you? I think there is a smaller one. I think one my mum is laughing at my cat because he's pushed <laughs> out. No, <laughs> I was thinking of when I, a couple of years ago when I came back, when I came here, and I first used that, I couldn't use it. What, do you remember? Yeah. It was, it was I just can't use them, but I'm all out loud, I love it now. I think there's a certain way that you can use it when you use it by freehand. Like you can, like if you're a dressmaker or whatever, and you can like go around. And there's a certain way that you have to butt it up against a ruler. And I think that's probably what you were finding. Is it? Because you've kind of got what, to. I, don't, I actually don't know what it was. And it's applying pressure on it as well, because I think people want to do it kind of like this when it's not like that like you hold it like a knife and fork almost mm -hmm. and you like roll it across the ruler to cut something <laughs> but you said you even bought one for decorating now yes i saw one in a, a diy uh, shop and the cutting wallpaper oh it's really good it's you know like sharp it pushes away um, and it's these come in style, like, yeah. they come in a pink and sheer one as well, but I don't, I don't know, I just don't like it for some weird reason. I don't think it you can cuts get different, that well. You can get different blades, can't you? Yeah, because it's like a wavy line, not like a that's, zigzag line. Yes, that's it, yeah. I mean, if you want to try it out, you can try it out. Um, I suppose it all depends what you want to cut it, what you're cutting out as well, isn't it? I know, I just didn't. I don't know. Maybe I just what don't do know how to. What do you use lines for then? It's um. Well, when you use a pinker sheet, you want to stop the phrase in your fabric, oh, right. rather than doing a straight line. Because if you do a straight line, then yeah. you have more of a tendency. Um, it's, it depends on the on the direction that you're cutting fabric in as well. Because if you use it on your scraps, and you end up cutting it on the bias, then that weave comes out a bit more easily than it does than if you're doing it on the. Yeah, the width yeah. and the waft and the yeah, <laughs> cutting it on the selvage and cutting it on the bias and oh, this that and the yeah. other. So it depends on the direction that you you're choosing to cut it at. It's yeah. So what else is there? Any other like? Yeah, I'm gonna talk about scissors. We're gonna move on from rotary cutters to talk about scissors, and I bought these ones down and we take up. The are normally my basement, so I'm in my living room right now. <laughs> <laughs> They're really good. I love those. A yeah. decent pair of like scissors for your sewing room is a definitely a sewing supply must have. A not paid or sponsored sewing supply must have. And I don't know what it is about these particular scissors that make them more useful than say just a regular plastic pair i think it's the weight of the scissors that make it good yeah. when you cut in and i think there's more of a um there's more of a pressure here when you're cutting through it it feels more yeah i don't stable. know they're, they're really nice though mm -hmm. do you know the i think it's the and i like them the bigger bigger scissors as well yeah you can see in like 
Well, not so much in the fabric line, but in the, there's more to do with like just upholstery and that. Upholstery, yeah, the yeah, great yeah. massive ones that they have. Yeah. I bet they would be probably a good one to um, mm -hmm. to have. Yeah. There's a guy on the market actually down the road that cuts your scissors for you and your knives. Sharpens. Sh sh sharpens <laughs> cuts. <laughs> cuts your scissors. Don't cut my scissors. Um, um, along sure. with <laughs> along with the big pair of scissors, the tiny teeny ones I bought. I didn't bother to bring my regular, just you know, whatever scissors. Um, but a good quality small pair of scissors are really good and I've also got some from my English paper piece so much are in the shape of a flamingo yeah they're lovely they're, they're good. good they're yeah, another yeah. one that they're are all metal they're all metal and they're all and it's weighted and I think that is definitely the secret behind a good pair of scissors they have to be all metal and since I've been here like I've, you know I think I've got like with rubber handles and stuff and I think the metal ones are much better Actually, somebody's given me a pair of them. I think I need to get them sharpened up. Some of the metal ones. Even if you went into um, one of them kind of like, like a charity shop or a, um, do you know that, that oh, Habitat for Humanity that's down the road? They probably have yeah, scissors yeah, like that. Yeah, they're that right, are yeah, like yeah. old and good quality yeah, scissors. Just get them sharpened up. Yeah. That's a good idea, I might do that. Yeah, thank you for yeah, that yeah, idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, I do a lot, of, um, I do applique a lot. And another thing that I like to have is applique scissors. Now, somebody recommends like the duck ones, and I don't really like these ones. And the reason why I don't like them is because of that actually, that wide thing. What you're supposed to be able to do is like lie that flat on the fabric, and then you like, lift the fabric up and you like cut the applique basically but i don't find that you can get in to cut i find that these ones leave a lot of like fabric left over whereas these ones are like 100 percent better and these are like flat as well because you need something like this you can't when you do an applique Trying to do it with a flat pair of scissors is next to hard work. Mm -hmm. You need something like this <clears throat> that has this kind of like end on it and then you can cut. So I like them. Do you think? Uh, yeah. You've not used them, have I've you? not done that, okay, no. As yet. While we were talking about scissors and stuff we might as well talk about rotary cutters and um i do love not rotary cutters um cutting rulers um i do favor this brand not paid or sponsored omni omnigrid um this is a folding one it's for like traveling um i like it but not so much as the one that is constant out because I find sometimes that this like flaps up a lot. Do you find it annoying? Or is it just no. me? No, because I, I probably use it that way. So well, I, I use it that know. way, but yeah. I just find sometimes that when this know. bends, it's just mm. kind of annoying. So this is another sewing must have. Have you used that one a lot? Um, um, uh, this is six inches by 24, I believe. Um, and then it has all of the grid markings to be able to do your, like your diagonals, your 45 degrees, this, that and the other. And it's worth, it's worth learning how to use these degrees as well, because you would use these, as my mum found out, when you're Ooh. squaring up um, half square triangles and... Um, just doing corners. The hourglass thing. Yeah, and doing corners and getting your corners correctly and stuff. I didn't actually know how to use that because I kept thinking, how do you do this? How do you do that? I've got, but and I've got the grip of it now. And I do have a square one because sometimes the bigger one gets cumbersome. And if you're doing smaller things, why not just have a smaller ruler? It seems mm -hmm. silly. Like, and this one's a 12 by 12 anyway, so it gives me that extra length because the other one's only six inches mm -hmm. 
obviously you could use it on the other side but and also it gives you like a, a straight out block if you just want to do a 12 inch by 12 inch quilt block um again it marks everything out for you so like even on on the ruler it shows you like where the two is, where the three is, where the four is. So if you want to square something up, you can do that on the ruler. Um, so that's another one I like. Um, and I, I have like a ruler thing. Like I have lots of rulers <laughs> to do things. And I, and I buy them and I never do anything with them. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have them though. It's a gadget thing. It's a yeah. gadget thing. Um, so I had this particular ruler, which is a six inch by one inch, which I find is really cool for when you're doing them smaller things. And then the other day, I found the bigger version of it. I don't know if I've gone and taken yours or not. I probably have gone. This is probably yours. Oh, that. Okay. I think mine is hung up in my room upstairs. I'll have to go and have a look. But um, this is a one inch by 12 inch. Um, and it's just if you're doing like i don't know if you're making bags or something or you just want to cut something really quickly like this is mm -hmm. really yeah useful. It is. It is along with that i think you probably saw that i had some sort of coating on my ruler like let me show you again it's my fault <laughs> <laughs> there's a coating on it so you can't quite see through it so this one doesn't that doesn't have the coating you see how it's and that one is like semi-translucent. So basically I'm... I'm not paid or sponsored to say this. I just like <laughs> using the product. <laughs> so um, this is called Odif. I think it's called Odif. Odef. Odif. And it's called Grippy Non-Slip Coating. And basically it puts a coating on your ruler so it doesn't slip and slide about. Um, no, you're not the reason why it went on. The reason why this went on is because I found it in my sewing room when I started tidying up. I knew I had it. But I kept slipping every time I was cutting. I was yeah. slipping for some reason. It's like, why am I doing this? And I, it's funny, I do it when I'm at home, so I'm going to have to get some of that as well. I hope they sell it. I'll have to buy it here. And just... They said it's made in France, so... It came a long way to come here. It can just hop, step, and skip <laughs> Magic over to the here. UK. Um, how much was it? I thought it had the price tag still on it. I think it was, I don't know, it might have been like 20, 24 bucks maybe. And it's a spray. And it does have a slight smell to it. So if you don't like the smells, you probably do it outside in the garage mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. So, or if you have like animals or pets around or whatever, maybe you want to, and it's literally just like spray, spray, spray. You'll see it build up and you'll wait a minute and it's ready to rock and roll. Ready to use right away. Yeah, I found it really good actually. It stopped the slipping stuff and everything. Don't do it anymore. That's a brilliant sewing must have. So obviously I don't use it all the time, but I do invertly use it all the time because it's sprayed on my ruler, so I do use it all the time. I might not spray all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I've I've had it on one of my rulers for quite a long time and it, it does stay on for a long, long time. So it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. It doesn't rub off unless you're stood there picking it off. Um The next thing is talking about pressing things without an iron. Because sometimes we have them fabrics that we can't press with an iron. Mm -hmm. And um, so what can we use instead of that? So I do have one of these. I'm not paid or sponsored to say this. So it's like, it's, it's a roller. And basically you'll fold over like your quilting piece or whatever, and you will press the fabric and it just gives a nice English crease. English paper piece in it, well, couldn't you? Yeah, hmm. you could, but I don't know. I'd rather have that fixed down. I mean, you just <laughs> to set you off, you know what I mean? <laughs> you 
It's all of us. What's it in there? Like <laughs> He's not made out of rose quartz, though. No. Do you reckon that would work, the rose quartz ones on your fabric as well? I guess it was. Oh, yeah. Yeah, should have. Should imagine so, yeah. It might be cheaper than going to the quarter store. Go and check out the oh, rose well, one. I'm going to the, it's like a wallpaper thing, isn't it? Really? It is like a wallpaper yeah. thing. There are things that people say to go to the dollar store or go to like... Yeah. Do you know like the DIY shops? There's the dollar that? store and there's the um, car shops. Yes, yeah. Because I have a magnetic tray and the sewing stores were charging quite a lot because it had you know pink polka dots or whatever on it for like i don't know 30 bucks but then i saw a magnetic tray in the auto section and it was like five bucks See, so they know that a guy isn't going to spend 30 dollars for a magnetic tray no <laughs> it's bad isn't it um, this one is really for like paper but you can use it for like other things, I think. It's, um, I don't even know what it's called. But it's the same sort of thing as this. But you're like, it's, you just, you know, use that to like press it on it, kind of thing. Oh, okay. Hold on, I'm not seeing one of these before. And you can use that with paper as well. So if you're like making a, a is card. It a, is it a plastic? Yes. And I bought it from the leather supply store, so it would have to be... I suppose you could, like, do you know when you make a cushion or something? Could turning it? things out, yes. Yeah, you could do that as well, couldn't you? Sophie's here! Hello! She always likes to come on the lives. <laughs> She's really gorgeous. And another thing that I have is a clapper, and my mum loves this thing. I really like that. It's really, really handy. So, Taylor's used these. I want one today. I want one today. <laughs> I have to go and get one we today. We need to go out shopping to get one of those today. <laughs> so, basically, it's a clapper, and Taylor's generally use these to get a crease in pants. So, let's say... It's even like the pleating. Yeah. Like getting you... You know anything like it's like straight. I've been watching. Out. I've been watching Pamela Anderson's Garden of Eden and saying how she was like loving how to do it right and that. I'm wondering if she has a clapper in order to get the creases in. Yeah. Because basically you are like you iron it and then you press the clapper down and basically it's made out of wood, a certain wood that wicks the moisture away from the fabric. And it helps to press the crease in. So if you, you've got trousers, uh, you know, just your regular ironing or anything. Yeah, you, regular. you want that, that perfect crease down. Crease down. Or oh, like say so you're doing a pleat in fabric or... Mm -hmm. Even if it's... Because it worked amazing on that foil. It did. It did, actually. It was very... If, if, if anybody's worked with foil before, you know, how <laughs> it was he was trying to get the the creases in the foil to sew down, wasn't it? To sew it down and to pin it and clip it in what have you. It was just getting that initial thing. It was slippy, slippy, isn't it? Yeah. But that really worked really well with that foil. So this is a really good sewing must have. Um, so while we're talking about turning things out, I might as well talk about the chopstick. Ah, oh, yes, yes. These are always in my sewing room. Sewing room, basement, wherever I'm sewing, I'm, I will have a chopstick. I think literally this came from when I was eating out. <laughs> I'll be honest. Oh, right. So yeah, I have a load happen. of these. They do come in handy, don't they? And for do, turning your corners out on your cushions, turn your corners out on your pouches. And also when I do my zipper pouches, and I put a tab in or whatever, it just pokes that corner out of the zipper pouch. So yeah, that's a great sewing must have. Um, ah, this is a faithful friend. <laughs> faithful friend, isn't it? Saving the best to last because we should never ever <laughs> be bothered about our mistakes. Especially when we're doing our sewing. Like, if you're sewing, you're going to make a mistake. Like, you can't just throw everything away. It's a wonderful gadget. Wonderful. 
And there is a certain way of using this, so you can actually go shoot yeah. and get rid of all the... You start it off, don't you, with that, with that. then you yeah. turn it round, don't you, and you're supposed to be able to go shh. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, don't ever be afraid of using the seam ripper. And I'm not. I've said what it was. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Um, I've got a really nice one that I got from the farmer's market years ago. Were you with me when we got that? See my pa? Did you know what it is? Neil bought it for yeah. me. Yeah. And it's it's on a lovely like gold chain. Yeah. And it's been made by this woodworking guy. So like the I should have brought it down, I just didn't even think. It's got a piece of wood here. It can un unclip from the chain. And the actual, and it can also, the seam ripper part can actually be pulled out. So it can be used a few different ways. And it was really good how it's done it. I really like that um, that seam ripper, it's one of my favourites. I mean, I should buy another one and have a one downstairs as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's nice to have a really good seam ripper. So there we go. They are my sewing must-haves. What are your must-haves? What are your... What are the things that you have to have in your sewing room? I mean, obviously we need the fabric and we need the sewing machine, but I wanted to think of things that I use all the time, personally, and these are all the things that I do use. Well, I don't know about the sewing machine. I've, I've done things by hand before now. I've sewn dresses and all sorts of things by hand. I don't have the patience for that. I know. I, I don't know. I used to do it in the evenings. I don't know how you keep the seams in either, because you'd have to sew really tiny. Yeah. I used to do that. I used to make these dresses and all sorts of bands. Wow. I used to cut it out one night and then just get it all sorted out, pinned out. I used to use pins then. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I hope you've enjoyed that. My cat now wants to sit on my lap, of course. Uh, let's show her beautiful face. Look. <laughs> She's Look. Gorgeous. Your beautiful face. Your beautiful face. <coughs> Um, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what your favourite sewing must-haves are. And I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.